This file is available for download, link in the video description below. That way you can examine all the formulas and techniques that I'm using to produce this zero field effect. In Power BI, when you're working with a matrix visualization, or what most people just call a pivot table, if there are intersections in the pivot table where a value has not been calculated, no value is displayed. So we get these little empty areas scattered throughout the report. Now, if we were to look at a pivot table in Excel, we can see the same structure, but if we want to fill in all the empty areas with zeros, this is very easy. We just go up to the Analyze ribbon. In the upper left, we go to the Pivot Table Options, and then right here we have an entry for empty cells show nothing. Well, we'll go ahead and put a zero in here. Hit OK, and now we have a zero filled report. Now, I think that this makes the report look a little bit cluttered, so one of the things I like to do is give the zeros a different font color, like a light gray. So I'll go to a zero, we'll go to home, conditional formatting, highlight, equals to. I'm gonna go in and custom format this, and I'm gonna format it with a light gray font. We'll hit okay. Now in conditional formatting with pivot tables, there is one extra step. So we have to go to the formatting options button and tell it to cascade this assignment to all cells that intersect states and products. So this way we get a zero filled report, but the real data is still easy to locate because it's not a wash in a sea of zeros. Now back in Power BI, there is no for empty cells show zero equivalent, but we are able to achieve this effect. Now I've scoured the web high and low trying to find an easier solution than what I'm about to show you. And please, if you know of one, put it down in the comments because I'd love to know it. But until I have that knowledge, this is the only way that I know how to do this. This isn't terribly difficult, but there are some very specific steps that have to be followed. What we're going to do is we're gonna create a new table in the data model that creates a unique list of states. Then we're going to create an explicit measure that calculates the sales. Now we're already using the states and the sales, but this will be done in such a way that will allow us to produce those zeros. So the first thing we're going to do is go up to the modeling ribbon and choose new table. The formula for this will be the name of the table. Then we're going to use the distinct function and we're going to get a distinct list of states. Close parentheses, enter. Let's go to the table view and see what was produced. So here we have a unique list of states. Now we can leave this list as it is. It's not an issue that it's not sorted, but my type A nature just really doesn't like that. So I'm gonna go up here and do an ascending sort. You don't have to do that, I just like that. And I'm also going to rename this column to states with zeros. And this is just so I can differentiate the original states column from the one that will produce zeros in a matrix. So now that we have this column built, we're now going to create an explicit measure that calculates the sales, but does it in such a way that will show zeros if there's no calculation. Now you can place the measure in any table, but since it's really kind of going along with the theme of the states with zeros, I'm going to put the measure in the zero fields table. I'll right click on the table and choose new measure. So this new measure will be called sales with zeros, and we're going to use a sum function to sum up the sales column. Now, if that's where we stop, this still will not work. This will produce what the implicit summing is already doing for us. Now, in order for this new table to talk to the existing table of data, we need to create a relationship between the state field of the table of data with the states in the zero fields table we just created. So we'll take state from the sales table and connect it to the states with zeros field of the table we created. So now we have this one to many relationship where a state that only exists one time in our zero fields table may exist multiple times within the sales table. We'll go back to the report view. So now we just have to switch two fields. We'll switch the native state field with the states with zeros field and the native sales field with the sales with zeros field. So we'll pull out state from the original table and replace it with states with zeros from the new table. Now this produces the exact same list of states, but now when we pull out the implicit sales measure from the native data table and replace it with the explicit sales with zeros measure, notice we still didn't get the zeros because there's one thing I left out. If we go back to the measure, sales with zeros, what we need to do is go to the end of that formula and add zero. Because the moment you add zero, you're now putting something in that area that originally had nothing. So where right now there are no sales of basketballs in Alaska, if I add zero to nothing, I now get zero. So basketballs in Alaska now shows a value. Because before there was nothing to show. Now there is something to show, there's a zero. And of course the zero doesn't affect any actual value that was calculated. Now to get that light gray look of the zero so it's easier to find actual data, we'll go to the data fields control of the matrix and here sales with zeros, I'm going to right click and add conditional formatting. And in this case, it will be a font color. The setting for this will be a rule and the rule is 
If the value is equal to zero as a number, then we'll give it a light gray color. We'll hit OK. And now we've got that washed out zero look where it makes it easier to find actual data. So to recap, we create a new table using the distinct function for the field that we're going to report on. We create an explicit measure that uses the sum function for the field that we're summing, but then we add zero to that answer. We go to relationships and create a relationship between the old field that we're reporting on and the new field that we're reporting on. Then in the report view, we will use those new fields instead of the original fields. It's not terribly difficult once you've done it a couple times, but we could definitely benefit from some simple checkbox like Excel has. Feel free to download this file that has all of the workings in place so you can examine the formulas that I've created along with those relationships. If you know of a better or faster way to do this, please put it in the comments. I would love to know it. But until then, this is what I have to do. Remember to take advantage of our ever-growing library of tips and tricks. Because remember, at BCTI, the learning never stops.